CTV News at 6 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. Thanks for being here. We begin this hour with a video that is getting a lot of attention, and police are worried that when it goes viral, as it will, it'll inspire somebody else to try it. That's been done before, but what's different about this stupid stunt is that it does not just endanger the life of the person who is shooting the video, although it certainly does that. And you may be on the video yourself if you were passed on a Vancouver Island highway by a motorcyclist who was weaving in and out of traffic at nearly 300 kilometers an hour. That is the sound of the motorcycle engine roaring at 299 kilometers an hour. The video was posted earlier this month on YouTube. It shows a biker rocketing down the Trans-Canada Highway, weaving in and out of traffic, lane splitting at more than 240 kilometers an hour, passing on the shoulders through View Royal and Langford. Police say it is extremely risky behavior, not just for the motorcyclist. It puts everyone at risk. Uh, there are multiple infractions. I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin. There's so many traffic infractions in here, uh, let alone the dangerous behavior, uh, dangerous to himself or herself, the driver of this particular bike as well. But at that speed, my understanding is it takes hundreds of meters for you to actually have the thought process to actually decide to bring the bike to a halt or to make a correction. Uh, so it shows the inability that this particular rider would have to actually adjust his course to avoid a collision. Uh, and uh, if something was to happen at that speed as well, it's very likely to cause a chain reaction accident with other vehicles. It absolutely would. The video runs about two minutes in length. Police say they are chasing a number of leads to try to identify the driver of this blue Yamaha motorcycle. You might have recognized this, uh, not realizing you're on video, if you had a motorcycle go by you on this stretch of highway at such a speed. If you do know anything about it, you're asked to contact Sandwich Police. And Sandwich Police are asking for your help tonight. They're concerned about the disappearance of an elderly woman, and they would sure like to find her. Her name is Shirley Burstall, last heard from by her family on April 5th. She's 75 years old, 5'7 in height, with short brown hair and blue eyes. She has a medium build. Police have released a video in which Burstall was last seen fueling up her car in Ladysmith. This was on the 5th of this month. Police say she had been to the Shimanis area before that. Her family describes her as a healthy and active senior who has done a great deal of traveling and has a lot of experience. Her daughter says she was planning to go away for a few days, but this is completely out of the ordinary. And there's been no activity or phone calls or anything. And I talk to my mom daily. And so we have a unique relationship. And so it's very surprising that I haven't heard from her. Uh, all contacts started, stopped with a text on the 5th, uh, which was a positive text. So, Mom, if you're listening to this, please, 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 we need to know what's going on here. This is, we're very frightened and upset. Her daughter also tells us that Burstall has been treated for thyroid cancer, and as a result, her voice is quiet and sounds a little rough. Burstall is driving a 2002 silver four-door Mazda Protégé with a BC license plate 287CFG. If you have seen her or have any information about the disappearance of Shirley Burstall, you're asked to contact your nearest police. Well, the revival of the e &N Railway may involve a major industrial expansion with a train running from the Comox Valley to Port Alberni carrying coal. The Island Corridor Foundation says it's preparing to make a pitch to the Raven coal mine with a plan to transport its product from the mine straight to the port where it'll be shipped. The mine has faced significant opposition, partly because the transport trucks hauling that coal would clog island highways getting to port. And that part of the plan might now change. They, in their plan, wish to ship it through to Port Alberni, through the Port Alberni, and are calling for it to go by truck. It's got a number of different hoops uh, as a mine that has to, they have to jump through. What our rail operator, Southern Rail, has done was that if the mine is to be given approval, uh, we're building a business case for the mining uh, industry itself, for the mine itself, uh, to show them a better way of doing it by hauling it through, through by train. As for the Raven coal mine, it is still going through the regulatory process itself to get approval. Work on the e &N line should begin in the fall. Passenger service could be resuming by next spring. There is also a report that says there is significant work that needs to be done to bridges and overpasses on the line, as well as the rail bed. RCMP and the Nanaimo were called to the Balmoral Hotel after a fight broke out between two men. Happened on Friday night at the Balmoral, which is a low-barrier housing complex run by the Vancouver Island Health Authority. RCMP say one man was stabbed in the altercation, possibly with a machete. 
When they got to the scene, they found uh, one male who was suffering from a deep laceration to his palm. He was taken to the hospital to receive stitches, later released. One male taken into custody was later charged for assault with a weapon and assault causing bodily harm. 45-year-old Thomas Leroy Bates, who was a tenant of the Balmore Hotel. The other male was simply visiting. A 45-year-old man was arrested, a 50-year-old victim treated and released from hospital. Police say they seized several knives from a room at the Balmoral, including a machete which may have been used in the attack. Well, teachers vote tomorrow and on Wednesday on a proposal to vote, uh, a vote rather, to withdraw all extracurricular activities in the schools. To the end of this school year, the BC Teachers Federation is calling for a series of job action to protest Bill 22. That's the legislation stripping teachers of the right to strike and imposing a mediator in their dispute. The head of the Nanaimo District Teachers Association says he's not really sure how his members are going to vote, but the association will make sure the teachers have all the information they need to make an informed choice. Tomorrow what we have is uh, we're hoping to see about 800 teachers at the Port Theatre and we're going to have a discussion there about it and uh, hear people's thoughts and opinions. Right coming out of that meeting, uh, members will be welcome to vote and we'll have voting booths set up for them. And then for Wednesday and Thursday of this week, uh, we'll have our office open for voting from 8 till 4.30. Teachers have been without a contract since last June. They staged a three-day strike in March. They say the government is only willing to negotiate within the net zero mandate, which does not allow wage increases in the public sector. Teachers and the employer went before the Labor Relations Board again today to hear arguments over report cards and how much reporting teachers can be forced to do retroactively and moving forward under their current job action. The regional district of Nanaimo is expanding transit service with a bus that will take people between Deep Bay and the Harbour City. Beginning today, the number 99 route will travel between Woodgrove Centre and Deep Bay with a morning and an afternoon run. That route will operate on Mondays just for now, but the regional district is hoping it'll be popular enough to warrant expansion to other days. And what that means for the residents of Area H is that you can get on the bus now and uh, be in Nanaimo or Woodgrove Mall an hour and a half later. You can spend three and a half hours in the mall and make your way back. It's important for our seniors. Uh, we have an aging demographic here. And perhaps very importantly is it offers our youth the opportunity uh, when school is out to use the bus to go to Nanaimo, to go to Qualicum, uh, to, uh, uh, to have some fun. The route will operate a little more informally than most bus routes in that it doesn't have designated stops. It'll pull over wherever someone wants to board the bus or get off. We don't actually have regular bus stops once you get into the electoral area, H area. Uh, basically, all you have to do is wave your arm. You stand safely anywhere along the road, wave your arm, and the bus will pull over and pick you up. Uh, the idea behind that is it makes, makes it more convenient for people uh, so they don't have to make it to a bus stop, especially when you're in an area that's, um, you know, uh, is a little bit more spread out. If you would like to take a ride on the 99, you can view the route map and the scheduled departure and arrival times at rdn.bc.ca.